friend and I challenged ourselves to shop our closets and not anywhere else for six months. I slipped and fell on that promise, got back up and caught myself searching for loopholes. But in the end, I persevered. How did I do that? Stick around to find out. You're not going to want to miss this because this is applicable to you no matter what your goals are. The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to Rat Race Reboot. I'm your host, Laura Noel. And as a certified coach and former 27-year military leader, each week I provide bite-sized mindset pivots that will help you reset your mind, reawaken your spirit, and regain your control. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. So we are into the new year, well into it. And maybe it's about six, seven weeks into it. And we might find at this point that our habits might start to relax a little bit. Maybe we're finding we're reverting back to old habits unconsciously. So sometimes we can think under this preconceived notion that it takes 21 days to set and solidify a habit. It takes 67 days to solidify a habit. Really, it takes as long as it takes. It depends how deep this old habit has been ingrained in you, how long you've been engaging in this old habit, and that'll determine how long it's going to take. So it could take a little less time. It could take a little bit more time. But the idea, and I know I can fall into this, is, all right, I'm good. I'm going to set it and forget it, right? Uh, But that's not really the case. (laughs) That didn't happen for me. But I'm going to share with you how I navigated through this to get myself back on track. And it's important that we do that. We don't get discouraged if we fall down or slip up. We just get back up and we create a new habit. And we we're, when we're doing that, we're creating new neural pathways, and it's up to us to be consciously aware of strengthening those pathways so that they do become stronger, and then this new way of being becomes our norm. But um, So this is what happened. So my friend and I decided that we were going to shop our closets for six months, and um, the idea behind it wasn't to be in scarcity or to punish myself and you're not allowed to shop. It was more because I wanted to um, get a sense of what was in there. I wanted to learn to appreciate what I had because sometimes I would get bored. I would open my closet and it was full, but yet I had nothing to wear. And so I would buy something new and new and shiny, and then that would inspire me. And then I would I neglect all of these other things that I loved in my closet, things that I'd forgotten about. So I wanted to learn to appreciate what I had and also tap back into my creativity, rediscovering things that I hadn't seen in a while. Hello, old friend. I would love to, you know, be creative with this outfit, but I was being lazy. I was being lazy with my creativity. So that was the the big idea behind this. So about 30 days into this, I was doing really well. I could catch myself in my mind um, trying to find loopholes. Does this count? Or if I need this, does that count? And I would kind of talk myself down. Okay, Laura, you know that you're trying to find a loophole. But there was a boutique that was closing in my town. And I really adore these ladies. And I mean, they've become friends. And so I wanted to support them. They were liquidating all of their items. And so I thought, oh my gosh, well, this is really good. I want to make sure that I go support them. And if there's something that I can take off their hands, I'll do it. I'll show my support. I'll be there, be present with them. And so, um, I, it, that sounds reasonable, right? I even called the friend who I was doing this challenge with and explained it to her. And she's like, okay, yeah, that that's that's a good reason. So I went and I bought a few things. And after the fact, I realized, you know, I rectified that. I justified this in my mind as to why I should be able to go to this boutique and buy something. I sp- sought out allies to support me in my justifying why I should be able to go to this boutique and buy something new. 
And that helped me. It helped me feel good about making a decision that was really contrary to what I originally decided and told myself I was going to do for myself, right? So I justified it. I didn't beat myself up, but I just noticed that that's what I was doing. And then that's when I backslid, okay? What I could have done instead was I could have gone to the boutique to support them. I could have brought them flowers. I could have you know, offered to buy them a drink or a snack afterwards. And, and, you know, in fellowship, I could have spread the word throughout my network. So there, there were a multitude of other ways that I could have supported them. So I slipped and it fell, you know, at about 30 days. Then a week ago, um, I was messaged by this boutique that I love to shop at in Boston. And um, there were some items that I purchased back in November there were three pieces that I I said, you know what, I'm not going to get these now. I'm going to wait until your winter sale and I'll get them then. And so that was my loophole. I, I pre, pre-planned my loophole with my friend. Hey, I'll do this with you. But there are three items I told the sales associate that I was going to get when they go on sale. Can we agree that this is, you know, I can do this? And of course, yes, we agreed. But again, it was a loophole. And so the sales associate messaged me and said, hey, these pieces are 40% off. And for uh, President's Day, they're going to be another 25% off. She told me this about this like before Valentine's Day. And I said, yes, I'll take them. And she's like, great, I'll hold them for you. So I had a few days to think, thankfully. And so what I did, and I kind of wrote a, some of these some of these questions down because I I want this to be helpful for you. So I first and foremost, I became aware of what I was thinking and I kind of sat with that. So for a couple of days, I found myself mulling over the items, going to my friend, my ally. Should I get this? I went to like three friends. Does this look okay? Should I get this? Even went to my husband, right? And so that that's a telltale sign to me when I'm asking other people for support and ideas and their opinions that I'm not straight in myself, that I'm not listening to myself and I'm not in alignment and I'm looking outside of myself um, for support. And so that was the first step. I had to stop. Thankfully, I had those couple of days to think about it. Then I consciously got connected with my bigger goal, my worthy ideal. Who do I want to be in my worthy ideal, in this big vision for my goal? Who who is the self-image? What is the self-image of myself in this goal? Who do I want to become? And then I ask myself, would my future self thank me for buying this or not? And then I ask myself, what do I really want? And by asking myself those questions, I was able to walk away from purchasing these items, which by the way, there's nothing wrong with having nice things for yourself. If anybody knows me, they know that I like wonderful, beautiful things, beautiful experiences, beautiful meals, um, you know, all of all of that. And I, I don't deny myself any of those things. So I'm I'm not saying that buying the thing in, in doing that, it would have been a bad thing. But what I'm saying is I had a different goal And I wanted to honor that. I wanted to honor myself. And so that was a bigger vision than having these these things. So think about your goals and what you're wanting to accomplish for yourself. Is your goal something that you're really excited about? Is Is it something that you're really truly connected with? Is it somebody else's goal? Now, that's going to really help you decide um, whether or not you you fall off the wagon or you get back on. If it's somebody else's goal, if it's something that you're really not excited or enthused about, then it's going to be easy to gather allies and justifications for you going a different direction and neglecting that goal in the first place and going back on your word to yourself. But if you're really in love with your vision and your goal, then getting reconnected with that and thinking before you make a decision and acting um, that's going to help you stay in alignment. And that's what it did for me. So I made a decision, not in the moment as the person I am right now, but I made a decision in that moment as the person, my future self, as the person I want to become. And that was really powerful um, because I didn't feel lack 
when I said no to the items that are, were beautiful. I didn't feel deprived in any way. Um, I also sent the sales associate a text and I said, you know what? I set this goal for myself to shop my closet for a multitude of reasons. And I really want to honor that promise that I made to myself. So I'm going to say no to these items. And I know they're going to find a beautiful home. They're beautiful. And she replied back to me, wow, you are so good. That's great. And I'm like, thank you. This was a difficult decision, but I'm honoring you know, myself. I'm valuing myself. I realized in doing this work that sometimes I would say yes to things because I didn't want to disappoint somebody else and I wanted to be liked. And so in asking my, myself these deeper questions, why do I want this? Why is this important to me? Uh, why am I saying yes? Why would I say no? I was starting to uncover some beliefs that were under the surface that I wanted to address. And so it was really powerful. And I walked away from this experience it, knowing that I didn't revert back to my old patterns of just automatically saying yes, because it's a good deal. Oh, I I, I told this person yes, and I don't want them to be angry with me. Um, I, I didn't go back into those old habitual neural pathways and old patterns. I created a new neural pathway and I was aware in the moment that I was doing it and I celebrated that. So now it's up to me to strengthen those neural pathways that I want to um, build as I'm growing and as I'm moving closer and closer to my worthy ideal and my goal. And we can all do that for ourselves by pausing before we make a decision that we feel is contrary to what our what our goal is and what our dream is. There are telltale signs for me when I know I'm not in alignment with myself. And one of them is I'm indecisive. And another one is I'll I'll actually my podcast producer Chrissy knows this. I'll, what do you think of this? I'll I'll message different friends. I'll ask my husband, what do you think I should do? that's a sign that I'm not in alignment with myself and I need to go think and use my mental faculties wisely and get in alignment. When I'm in alignment, I am decisive, I'm clear, I'm focused, and I feel good about the decisions I'm making. And most importantly, I know that those decisions are in alignment with who I want to be in the future, not with what I want right now. And so I hope this is helpful for you. I wanted to walk you through that in, in real time because this is something that happened uh, for me as I'm trying to create new habits or as I am creating new habits and I want those habits to stick. Um, you know, I don't have this down pat perfectly. There are things as I'm growing and learning and adapting, uh, I'm going to be pulled back into my old habitual way of being. That's our brain is designed to keep us comfortable. It wants to keep us in our comfort zone because it's what we know. But if we want to create something new, we have to be willing to sacrifice. And what I mean by that is we need to be able to sacrifice beliefs that we know are no longer serving us and get a little bit uncomfortable creating new habits that will stick. And I'm so grateful I did that. Um, you can do and be and have anything you truly desire when you know how to master your thinking. It's a mind game with yourself and you just got to learn how to play it. And it starts with awareness and it starts with gaining clarity about what you truly desire and connecting with that. Um, I was able to course correct because I have a strong connection with that goal. So if you find that you are continually missing the mark or falling off the wagon, all these you know <laughs> things that you might think of. It might be that your goal isn't really what you want. It might be that your goal actually belongs to somebody else, or maybe you haven't taken the time to think about what it is you truly desire. And I'm here to support you if you want help in figuring that out. So go to ratracereboot.com. You can connect with me there. 
Um, I have some free downloads and meditations for you to help you get some focus and clarity and quiet around your thinking. Those meditations are only three minutes long. Come on, you, you can carve out three minutes of time. But do that, give that gift to yourself. And then if you want to have a conversation, a deeper conversation of what this could look like for you, how I can help you gain clarity on your goal, on your purpose, your mission in life, and how you can tap into that intuitive guidance and those answers that are already locked up inside of you, then I want you to connect with me on ratracereboot.com. Send me an email and we will get on a call. But in any case, go to ratracereboot.com. Leave us a five-star review if you got value from this. Leave us a verbal written review. I'd love to read those. And um, I'm excited to see what unfolds for you. But thank you again for listening this week. And remember, everything is created twice. First in your imagination and then in physical form. So until we meet again, we'll see you next week. Have a wonderful week. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.